Hello again, my creeping army. Before we start the story, I just want to give a big thanks to Walter's Music for letting me read his story, and also providing the backing music for this video. If you haven't already, please check him out in the description below. He's seriously underrated and makes some awesome music. I also want to give a bit of a warning. I do not speak German, so please have mercy on my pronunciation. As always, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe. I'm on my way to 500 subscribers, and it would really mean a lot. Hope you enjoy, and remember, they're all just stories. Alex Daminen was driving back to his parents' home in Tulsa, Oklahoma for the summer to get away from his college in Chesterton. The getaway could not have been at a better time. Overworked and not doing well at making friends, he didn't mind getting away from the damn place for a while. He hated it that much. He wasn't the social type by any means, and now he dreaded going near anyone in that school with all their happy faces and parties and friends. Pathetic. But now he was in peace and quiet as he drove down a rural road in the dead of night, dense forests surrounding him on either side. Some may find this kind of environment creepy, but not Alex. He loved the so-called darker things in life. As he drove on, he started to notice a strange light in the distance, staring back at him almost like a train at the end of a tunnel. The closer he got, the clearer it became what it was, a gas station. He thought to himself, well, who knows where the next one will be, so might as well fill up here. As he exited his white Ford LTD, he looked into the glass windows and saw the cashier staring at a small TV on the counter. He was sitting still, unnervingly still, too still. As he walked in and pulled a $20 bill out of his wallet, he noticed the cashier never moved or even looked away from the TV. He was odd looking. He had long brown hair with a bald spot in the middle, and was morbidly overweight, easily around 400 pounds, and he was also missing several teeth. The smell emanating from him was awful, almost like he hadn't showered in a very long time. Hey, Alex said to the still staring cashier. No reaction. Can I get 20 bucks on pump one? He said, now raising his voice. The cashier finally snapped out of it and looked over to Alex with malice in his eyes, a look one would have when frustrated, or when staring down an uninvited guest. Hold your horses, boy, said the cashier. He continued to stare at Alex for an uncomfortable amount of time before finally taking the cash and ringing him up, bringing his attention fully back to his TV. Alex walked out of the gas station, telling himself that it was just some crazy redneck and he should just hurry up and fill up his car. He was relieved to get back on the road and away from this creepy area and the people that lived there. As he drove, a heavy storm came out of nowhere, one of the worst he'd ever seen. It was as if the sky itself was falling and the lightning was so bright it revealed the darkness hiding in the forest that enclosed either side of the road. He'd only been driving for maybe 20 minutes when he heard a loud banging sound coming from behind him. In shock, he slammed on his brakes and nearly hydroplaned before stopping completely and listening fearfully. Where could that have come from? He hadn't seen anybody else on the road for miles. Was it the lightning, he thought to himself? The answer came when the sound started up again with no lightning to be seen or thunder to be heard. It sounded like it was coming from his trunk, but how? The noise got louder and louder, and although Alex was terrified, he knew he had to see what the hell was going on. He got out of the car, and although Alex loved dark movies and video games and such, it was far less enjoyable when it was him cowering in the dark alone. He shakily slid the key into the trunk, and after a deep breath, he popped it and saw nothing. But how could that be? The sound was clearly coming from his trunk. It sounded like something was going nuts in there. He was very uneasy at this point, so he just got back into his car. As he put the key in the ignition, he was shocked to see that his car had completely died. He tried to turn over the engine a few more times to no avail. How is this possible, he thought. This car is practically brand new. Seeing no other choice, he decided to walk back through the storm to the gas station, though the thought made him cringe. 
He then exited his car and awkwardly speed walked through the heavy rain back to the gas station, constantly looking back at his car. He couldn't shake the feeling that something was watching him from a distance. Eventually, he had walked so far that he was surrounded only by trees and a very isolated road. After what felt like forever, Alex made his way back to the gas station, but was greeted with a sight that made his skin crawl. There, at pump one, was his white Ford LTD. But he had just come from his car, it was nearly ten miles down the road. Even the license plates were the same, but how? Now more confused and beginning in panic, he walked into the gas station and once again saw the massive cashier, eyes still glued to the screen. Hey, Alex said shakily, the man once again remaining still. Hey, Alex shouted, unable to contain his fear and frustration any longer. The cashier slowly turned, rage in his eyes. Who are you shouting at, boy? Alex sighed shakily. Look, I've had a long night and I'm really confused. I need to know whose car that is out there. The cashier stared blankly, almost like he thought Alex was stupid. Did you see who was driving the white LTD at pump one? Alex cried, becoming more desperate. The cashier then heaved himself up from his stool and leaned in. Boy, that is your car. Don't play with me. Now you bark at me like that again and you're gonna have to leave. Alex just looked up at the large man. But don't you remember me getting gas here like 30 minutes ago? I don't know what game you're trying to play, boy, but I do not take kindly to troublemakers in my store. Now I've just about had enough of you, so get out. Alex was very confused at this point, but because of the crazy look in the cashier's eyes, he walked out and into his car. To his amazement, the car started up and had a full tank of gas, as if nothing had happened. He just couldn't figure out how the hell it got back here in the first place. He slowly drove out and back on the road, hoping to forget everything that happened tonight. Just a strange event that couldn't be explained. Maybe it was best to just not think about it. As he drove in the rain, he noticed there was no lightning this time. Just heavy rain. He was driving for about 15 minutes until he heard a familiar sound. He slammed on the brakes in panic. He didn't just hear that, did he? Then the sound became louder again. Out of pure panic, Alex bolted out of the car and ran as fast as he could back to the gas station, not even checking the trunk this time. As he ran, he kept looking back, terrified from the feeling something was following him this time, not just watching. As the rain pelted his face, he kept running, despite the fear creeping up his back and burning in his lungs. When he finally arrived at the gas station, he saw it again. White Ford LTD. Pump 1. What the hell is going on? He screamed desperately. He couldn't take this anymore, so he burst through the gas station doors, and as he predicted, the fat man was there watching his TV. Alex slammed his hands down on the counter and demanded, Do you remember me? The cashier glanced down at him, an eyebrow raised. What, boy? Have you ever seen me in this store? He asked desperately. The cashier just looked at him like he was a madman and simply said, I have never seen you before in my life. Now if you're not going to buy something, there's the door. Alex, stunned at the situation, just simply walked over to the drink aisle not knowing what to do next. His head was racing when he heard the twinkling of a door bell as someone entered the store. He didn't think anything of it as he tried to find the most highly caffeinated drink he could to try and wake up from whatever the hell was happening to him. Alex grabbed the most sugary, high caffeine drink he could find and then he noticed the cashier talking to a man speaking a foreign language. As Alex walked up to the counter to buy his drink, he saw the backside of an old man trying to talk to the cashier, but he wasn't speaking English. I don't know what you want, old man, said the cashier. I can't understand you. Hilf mir, die Polizei zu rufen. Ich brauche Hilfe, the old man said frantically. The frustrated cashier responded, I don't speak German, now get out of my store. At this point, the old man turned around, and when his eyes landed on Alex, his face turned white. What? Alex asked. The man's eyes filled with horror as he stumbled backwards toward the door. Why are you looking at me like that, old man? He snapped, frustrated and scared. The old man only said one thing as he continued to back away, pointing a finger at Alex. 
In a hollow and desperate voice, the old man hoarsely cried, Der Teufel! He turned and scrambled for the door, all the while screaming, Der Teufel! Der Teufel! As the man ran into the night, Alex stood completely still, in shock as he tried to process what just happened. I don't know who you are, boy, but you best pay and leave, the cashier said softly, nervously. Alex silently paid for his energy drink and walked back to his car. As he shut the door, he sat and thought, trying to process what was happening and why. Was he stuck in limbo? Was this a curse? A dream? Was he in hell? None of this made sense. As he started his car over a feeling he couldn't explain, he drove down the road for a third time, steadily picking up speed. As he drove, he kept asking himself if he was crazy as he waited for some answer that he knew would never come. He started driving so fast, the rain was hitting like bullets on his windshield. As he sped down the dangerously slick road, he heard a sound right on time. But this time, it wasn't the same sickening thump from inside his car. This time, it was the sound of a police siren. In his side mirror, he could see the flashing red and blue lights. What was a cop doing this deep in the woods? He'd been speeding, yes, but no one was around for miles. The officer knocked on Alex's window and was stern and to the point. Do you know how fast you were going? Why the hell were you going 75 on a 50 mile an hour road, son? Asked the officer. Alex's eyes, stunned and wild after all that had happened tonight, caught the attention of the cop. Have you been drinking, son? He asked. No, sir, said Alex. Their conversation was interrupted by a familiar banging noise from inside the trunk. The officer backed up and looked right at Alex. In a demanding tone, he barked, Step out of the car and keep your hands where I can see them. Alex complied. What's in the trunk? The officer asked, hand on his sidearm, as Alex stepped out with his hands up. Nothing, Alex said, his voice strangely cheerful after everything he'd been through that night. Now, you come over here and open this trunk. Don't try to pull anything now, the officer said, clearly unnerved. Sure, Alex said in a calm, unnatural voice. He popped open the trunk and the officer gasped. Inside the trunk was an old man, covered in blood, a knife buried in his chest. The police officer raised his pistol at Alex fearfully and asked the old man, Sir, are you okay? Can you hear me? The old man weakly turned his head toward Alex and hoarsely choked out the words, Der Teufel. Er ist der Teufel. He raised his hand, pointing at Alex with what little strength he had left. The officer glanced back toward Alex and his heart dropped. His eyes had turned black and he was now smiling. His teeth were sharp and jagged, inhuman. Get back! The officer screamed as he opened fire. Gunshots ran throughout the night, and then silence. The next morning, police arrived to a grisly scene. What the hell happened here? The sheriff asked. The deputy explained that the old man in the trunk had been dead for hours. He had gone into shock and died of blood loss from the knife in his chest. A background check revealed he was a tourist, originally from Wolfsburg, Germany. But no one knew why he was in the States. They had also found one of their men among the carnage. His body had been mauled and ripped apart near the car. His head and limbs were separated from his body and strewn around the scene. His eyes had also been gouged out. No one else was found at the crime scene. The only clue they had came in the form of a strange dripping marking on the door of the car. Written in the blood of the officer were the words, Der Teufel, 